Hey there again folks, welcome back to my let's play of Never 7, The End of Infinity. Missed yesterday, yesterday wound up being busier than I thought it would be. Yeah, not about pre you know, pre-recording it, but that feels like uh, cheating to me, so. For now, I'll just, I guess I'll miss a day. I don't really think I want to do two today. Yeah, so. Yeah, missed yesterday. I'll still finish this game this year though. In 2014, it will be finished. Hopefully, maybe the first half of the year. So, yeah, not much else to say. Uh, we last time we somehow knew that the car wouldn't start, the truck wouldn't start. So, and we had to make a decision, right? Is that one? Yep. We were going to tell him, "Hey, it was a premonition. Dang it! Somehow I'm a psychic. I don't know why. I don't know how, but I know the future." I don't know, I can't pick and choose what I know. Yes, I don't really understand it myself, but it's probably what you're thinking. In other words... Oi, Ishihara! Masaka, mata yochi nante baka no koto yidasu in janai daro ne. Okay, so this guy still ain't believing nothing. Okuhiko, be Okuhiko beats me to the punch, instinctively leaving me at a loss for words. Kono kuruma no jyotai o mireba, ugo kikko nai tte omou no wa tousen no koto da yo. Okiko's words are like an intimidating air that leaves me with no room to object. Just like yesterday, I think it's safer if I stay silent. However, Izumi san doesn't seem to be buying it. Yeah, if he's still in the future, it don't matter. There's nothing strange about that, you know. He put him in the same category with people who are make, able to make the truck go up in the air, you know, who's hovering around. Yeah, nothing strange about that. Nothing strange about the people who can, who can uh, look through the trunk and be like, hmm, you know, you got some gunk. I, I said trunk. The hood. Uh, you know, be like, you got some gunk in your uh, pipes there near the the um, engine. I'm not a car guy. I don't know cars. So. <laughs> For better or worse, Okiko manages to brush the topic of my premonitions aside, not believing in them. That he mentions it though, the only way to get to the harbor now is by walking. Hey, Zumi-san. And Okuhiko is listening and whisper to Zumi-san. I'll talk to you about it next time. Take my chance to leave her as she tries to search for a reply. Izumi-san <laughs> says this in a way that makes it clear that she doesn't comprehend what's going on. I'm paying out to hear and quicken my pace. Besides, the only one who doesn't understand the most is myself. Why did the words, the battery's dead, isn't it, come out of my mouth? Somehow I felt like it wasn't me who said it. I'm shrouded by an irritating and uncomfortable sensation. For a short while, I walked through the tranquil rural landscape. The chirping of songbirds and the sight of green plants are a calming in contrast to my chaotic state of mind. Suddenly I realized that someone's trying to catch up with me. I even need to look over my shoulder to tell this, Izumi san. Everyone else has already passed me and they're walking in front of me. Unless it was another character, but I think all the characters have been introduced by now. So, to, to avoid Izumi san's questioning, I should. I like how they don't have like a fourth option where you can just dive in the bushes and hide. <laughs> and I also like how they don't have an option like just stand there and take it like a man. I guess it's not important to the story though yet. Things seem to be progressing with Yuka a bit uh, more with the others so. 
have the feeling that she's probably the more preferable uh, person to, uh, to complete their story first. I don't know why. Alphabetically, she's the last one. But she is the first person you see in the game, so maybe that's why my thinking is. And because he's kind of had a lot more forced interaction with her. Yeah, go with Yuka. At first, I think I should try waving and walking towards Yuka. However, I give up on that. I'm a little too scared to approach her after what happened earlier. If she starts yelling at me again, it would be nigh impossible to run away from her. Oh yeah, that's right, she's drunk. I think I'll... I guess I'll make sure that Okuhiko behaves properly around Haruka. I run over to Haruka and Okuhiko, who are walking together a bit ahead of me. As soon as I catch up to them, Okuhiko glances at me with clear disdain. I was just wondering what you two were up, what you two were talking about. In the face of that glare, I give an indifferent answer. Just then. <laughs> Surprisingly, Haruka herself answers my question. So, so you go to. Dakara is Harani wa kanke nai. Oh, it has nothing to do with me. If I remember correctly, I believe that I'm going fishing as well. Dakara is Harani wa yaya tsiti kumaro. Well, since Yuki is forcing us to go now, I guess I'm coming along with unwilling. Oh, Dakara is Harani wa tsiti kumaro. Dakara is Harani wa tsiti kumaro. Dakara is Harani wa tsiti kumaro. Dakara is Harani wa tsiti Negative na yatsu ga iru to mori agaru hanashi mo mori agaranaku naru. He didn't he didn't even have a mood in the first place, did he? Felt like saying this, but I'll let it go. I'm just going to ignore him. Anyway, I'm interested in knowing why Haruka is in favor of this. I then try asking her, Why did you want to go fishing? Okay, go looks at me with some with scorn. さかのと人間との真剣勝負なんだよ。微妙な駆け引きを必要とする壮大なロマンさ。あの当たりが来た時の快感と言ったら、それはもう言葉にできないってぐらいに。触れたいから。Oh <笑> man, that... she just totally ruined his complete statement. Rika suddenly mutters this. 魚に触れたいから。そう、そういうこと。ようやくするとそういうことになるね。生きた魚に触れてみたい。うん、わかるわかる。つまりその自然との触れ合いというか、なんというか。生きた魚の心臓に私は触れてみたいの。Fish's living heart. Our living fish's heart, is that what she's meaning? <laughs> Haruka softly places her palm on her chest. It looks as if she's trying to feel her own heartbeat. Of course, Okuhiko is in a complete loss of words. Which is awesome, but I wouldn't know what to say to that. And that we all remain completely silent. Maybe, not to be mean or nothing, but maybe that's why she doesn't have any friends. There, if somebody tries to be friends with her, she says something that nobody knows how to reply to, and it's just awkward silence, and then people just slowly sulk away until. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, we arrive at the shopping district. Our destination is just past the fishing market, dead ahead of us. There is Imusan gathers all the necessary gear from the local fishing gear shop. Yeah, let's go. begins to take charge as she distributes the gear amongst us. Everyone obe obediently starts heading towards the harbor as they curiously play with their reels and hooks. As I'm about to take a step forward, Zimusan grabs my forearm. Oops, I didn't mean to cut her off. Izumi-san leaves me with those words. 
Although her tone was kind, there was a piercing light in her pupils. It was a threatening gaze that instinctively leaves me unnerved. <laughs> Sound like Yuka. Several minutes later, someone else restrains my upper arm. I turn around and see. Okay, yeah. Crap, well, her of all people. Hey, it'll be nice if we catch a lot of tuna. With a strangely shrill voice, I go to shake Yuka's hand off of it. It'll sure be nice if we catch some tuna. Maguro? Tanisura. Yuka nears her eyebrows. I notice that all traces of her previously flushed face have vanished. If anything, she just looks kind of pale. Seems like she's finally sobered up. Her grip around my arm grows tired. Why are you saying this now? The hell are you saying? Aren't you the one who said I want to eat fresh Toro in the first place? Are you going to say it's because I was drunk when I said that? <laughs> well, either way, we're not going to change plans now just because you want to. Everyone else is quite pumped up for this. With my fishing rod, I point to the others who are far ahead of us. Before she can say anymore, Yuka stops herself from speaking. She hangs her head defeated. What kind of bad feeling is it anyway? I ask for this. Oh, dang it. I pause too much. Anxiety. Meaning...the I have seen people, uh, where I used to work, uh, saw a guy stand on the very top of a ladder, you know? That scared the crap out of me. When I say the very top, I mean, you know, it goes up on... Kind of like this right here. And then there's like a ledge right here, just one like little thing right there. They were standing and kind of tiptoeing on that. I'm like, oh crap, this guy's gonna fall, he's gonna break my neck. His neck. Potentially my neck, I suppose. And yeah. This, you know what she's saying? You know what you're trying to say? My fishing is it something you can really compare it to standing on a pile of books. That's just the movie Jaws. I get it, I get it. I really don't get it. But I can't think of anything else to say. I guess just that. I don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> it's just an anxious feeling. I give her an eye while gently prying her hand off of me. I give her a light push, which causes her to pick up her reluctant march to the harbor. So it seems like something's gonna go down here while they're fishing. The fragrant stench of the cell and tides overwhelm us, and those of us who are fishing have spread out on the pier. It's a rather, a rather peaceful scene. Yuka is standing on the pier, twisting her fishing line around, round and round her finger. She still looks very anxious. Bad feeling, huh? Yuka can talk to you for a second. Nani? About what you said earlier, was that a premonition? Yuka's expression warps. As I'm about to continue speaking, we suddenly hear the echo of Saki's voice. You and I turn around. On top of the pier, we see Saki in the middle of a shaking Haruka. However, Haruka refuses to budge and tries to block her path. We can't hear what they're saying. However, I've, I've never seen Haruka so angry before. Saki shakes her head in what appears to be astonishment as Haruka forces her to move back. Saki then runs to the table of the pier. Okuhiko begins to run towards Haruka, who's as still as a statue. Yeah, let's go see. Then just as we're about to run towards them... <coughs> Saki screams at the same time as the booming roar of a wave breaks out. What monstrous wave? 
The unbelievably large wave strikes the pier with a large sheet of water. As it strikes, the wave devours Saki and drags her into the ocean. I'm frozen in place. This incredibly sudden event has snatched away my sense of reality. It was like I'm watching a scene from a movie. Just then, Izumi-san runs and dives into the ocean off, the, off the tip of the pier. Izumi-san, suicide. Grab Yuka by the hand and we run towards the tilt. By the time we reach it, Saki and Izumi-san are nowhere to be seen in the ocean. Okay, so Haruka and Kurumi are also come running over. Kurumi's face is completely drained of blood. Ow. I have a feeling if we do the, the diving in to save them thing, uh, it'll turn up just being Izumi San uh, who's gonna have to wind up pulling, uh, pulling Makoto out. You know, one of those things where the people who try to do the saving wind up needing to be saved themselves, you know what I mean. Ah, uh, crap. Praying for their safety seems like a, uh, an improper thing to do, but a, um, in action type thing to do, you know what I mean? Not. Probably the safest thing you could do, though. I'm gonna pray for their safety because I need to make a decision. Saki Zumi san, please be safe. I pray for their safety. The wave coils into a whirlpool. We're all silent, then moving. It feels like if we even spoke or moved a little, everything would end. This is if time itself is frozen. I'm assuming that, I, you know, this is something I just thought of. I'm not sure if you can make it though. If if always you make it the full six days, I just thought of that. If you could get a bad ending really early, you know the game I played before, the bad endings happened at the end. But that would make a, that would be a pretty cool twist if there were like endings like that, and then really crappy endings where you do something stupid in the middle of it. You know, like on the second day. I don't know if that's a possibility. Actually, that makes me kind of wish I had went, but I'd actually chosen the last one then. Dang it. Oh well. So time itself is frozen. The wave begins to quietly pull back. Just then, Izumi-san and Saki's faces emerge. So the time is, seems to move again, and everyone's anxiety is lifted. I had faith, I had faith in Izumi there that she would pull up, pull up everything out good. Zim San is the only one swimming, frantically moving her arms across the across the water. Zim Saki is unconscious. The giant wave surges forward, and Izumi San rides it, washing up on the banks with Suki, with Saki's body. Ate just a little bit ago. It's probably not a good thing that I'm recording this so soon after. <clears throat> the rest of us descend to the bank's edge to join them. Saki's face is completely pale. For some reason, her expression is strikingly beautiful. Perhaps because of that, none of us dare reach out. Out our hands to them, our feet rooted to the ground. <sighs> Why do you not perform a uh, mouth to mouth resuscitation? Uh, she was too pretty to uh, resuscitate. Yeah, that seems like a good thing to tell the uh, paramedics or the cops when they arrive. <laughs> That's creepy in a way. Finally, the soaking wet Izumi san manages to firmly stand up. Since Okuhiko is closer to Saki, he carries her to, up to the bank. Kurumi tells Izumi 
Tails Izumi san. I'm still standing frozen on the beach. It's not just me. You and Haruka are the same. I do like how she's going to get help. Like how this is 2019, as told in a game written in 2000. And there's no cell phones anywhere. <laughs> it seems so strange. Uh, it's the same way in Ever 17, I know. But it's very strange. Future told that doesn't have cell phones. And, you know, the, the, the movies, you know, they always told the future said flying cars, holograms, such fantastical stuff. None of them ever imagined we'd have a thing that you could go boop, boop, boop. And text somebody, tell them something, or call somebody from anywhere in the world, or they'll watch TV video on your phone and all that sort of stuff. I don't have a fancy phone, so I can only do the texting and the calling, but still. Uh, hmm, am I a flicker? I think I just blinked. Uh, but it, anyway, it is strange that uh, the simpler of the fantastical things, they never actually. The, the fantastic thing that did happen, they didn't actually predict in the crazy movies. Also, lawyers are still around, so... Yes. Sakita! Sakita! Okiko lays Saki down on the bank and slaps Saki's cheeks. I I we frantically rush o over towards them. Saki's eyes flutter open and blank she blankly stares at Okiko. I hear the stir of many people approaching us. When I turn around, I see Izumi-san is leading them with Kurumi behind her. I nod, and Izumi-san falls to her knees as she lets out a sigh of relief. Kurumi desperately tries to stop her sister from collapsing. I look back at Saki, who is still firmly staring at Okuhiko. We went to the clinic located just outside the shopping district. It only has one sick room. A piece of the wallpaper peeled off here and there. Does she have glasses on? Has she had glasses? I feel so horrible if she has had glasses. Because I don't remember her having glasses. I have a horrible memory. The bed Saki is lying on has springs that creak every time she moves. I'm going to have to look back and see that now. Though she has no external wounds and was clearly conscious, the doctor examined her just to be safe. There weren't any particularly serious issues, but the doctor wants Saki to stay here just in case. He said it only have to be for the night. I'm guessing you would think this, and you would say that. Is that what happens? Hey, what's up that day? I'm just going to think it for now. It's not a very well cupped up clinic. That makes me, that kind of make me worry there. Um, the uh, painting there is uh, Peeling and everything, you know. Well, peeling. I mean, we're, they've had something there, like a poster, and you know, It'd be cool if I could see. I bet that calendar is not the proper. I bet that. I bet it still has March on it. But it does have a lot of red, meaning I guess the holidays. Unuseful detective work was shook. Welcome to the Let's Play. Um, <laughs> it does have a lot of red there. So perhaps that means like a holidays, like Easter, Passover, that sort of thing. Which is normally in April. Okay. Detective Let's Play is over. Uh, we're going to think, what's that supposed to mean? What's that supposed to mean? It's not you want to die? Hmm. I try to read Saki's expression. Up until now, I hadn't, haven't seen any signs of Saki being suicidal. And those probably aren't her true feelings, if that's the case.
Yeah, that doesn't sound very grateful. Although she could be kind of embarrassed and ashamed that she had to be rescued, she does seem like a very independent kind of person who who hates to owe anybody anything. So I can say this without making eye contact with anyone. Taki, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I you can shout at Saki, offended her behavior. まあいいじゃない。とにかく大事なかったんだから。そりゃそうですけど。そう。ユカが波に飲まれたわけでもないんだし。タキ、あなたいい加減に。Stop it, Yuka. That's enough. I pacify Yuka. I think I understand Saki's feelings. It's likely that Saki's simply embarrassed. She is just that kind of girl. それよりこれからどうするの？ずっとみんなでサキちゃんについてることもなさそうだけど。そんな必要ないわよ。When you can say that Saki hopefully turns her head away. And that's what you expect from a spoiled rich girl. とりあえずうちの店で落ち着かない？サキちゃんの方は。そうだ、くるみついててあげて。え、くるみだけ？ たまには人の役に立ちなさい。ほら、さきちゃんにはちゃんとビザを届けられなかったんだから、罪滅ぼし。ああ、そんなのないよ。あれはくるみのせいじゃないのに。お姉ちゃんの言うことを聞けないの？